he's got something to reveal to you all uh, about IWM. If you're not familiar with David, you will know him today. So let me bring him on now. Hey, David, how are you? Greetings, Gabrielle, and hello to all your millions of followers all over the world. I'm very privileged to actually be in your company and the company of all your followers who I've heard are some of the most beautiful people in the world. Oh, you're too kind. I really appreciate I you taking your time to do this interview today. Thank you. Could you let everybody know where you live and uh, what was your day like today? And we'll get in with the interview after that. Okay, so I live in the middle of England in an area that is called Shropshire or Shropshire, which is a rural community um, full of farms, beautiful countryside, very historic, medieval towns, a lot of history, castles, cathedrals all sorts of great stuff and lots of farm machinery that's falling to bits like old tractors, which is perfect for me. Uh, so that's where I live. I haven't always lived there. I was born in an industrial part of the city of Wolverhampton uh, sometime after the Second World War. But when I was a child, um, post-war, the area had been heavily bombed by in the war. So my playground when I was a little boy growing up were derelict factories, burnt out buildings, a lot of rubble. It was a war scene. Uh, and I, I actually don't think I saw a tree till I was 10. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but that's what it felt, felt like. So a lot of dust, a lot of gray stuff. And having said that, it was a deprived area. Having said that, I had a very happy childhood. I can't complain about anything. And of course, being brought up in a rough, tough environment does pre prepare you for the life as a watercolor artist. <laughs> Just joking. So, so what was your next question, Gabrielle? So folks right behind me is one of david's uh amazing uh tractor pieces if you're not familiar with his work uh if you are familiar with his work uh i'm sure you're just dying to hear some little snippets about david now one of the secrets i know about david is he doesn't ruin watercolor paintings he keeps at it could you share a little bit about your process of painting? Okay, so my process. When I was four years old, I was given a present at Christmas, which was a tin of watercolor paints by my grandmother. Now, there weren't any artists in my family. Uh, everyone was very hardworking, wandering around amongst these burnt out, bombed out buildings in Wolverhampton. Um, but I had this tin of watercolour paints and when I opened it, it was like a revelation because there before me was a box of jewels. There were so many beautiful colours and my world up to that point had been pretty colourless, grey and dull and dark and, and muted. So I had this tin of watercolour paints. We knew that water had something to do with watercolour paints. Uh, so we ha I had to find my own way with water and the paints and obviously made a lot of you know, had a lot of disasters. My uh, mother cut up pieces of old wallpaper into 12 inch squares and I had a mountain of these pieces of wallpaper and that's what I practiced on. Hundreds and hundreds of pieces of wallpaper. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. There was no one to show me what to do, um, but I loved it. And that's where my love of watercolor painting was born. It was a great escape. It was something I could do on my own. I didn't have to, you know, run the run the gauntlet of the streets with all the big kids i could just be on my own painting away came out to play football and all the other stuff you do as a kid but that was my therapy was painting and i carried on paint and i've carried on painting in watercolors all through my life i've dabbled with other mediums oils charcoal all the stuff that you do but i always come back to watercolor because for me it's the most organic medium it is true to nature. 
we're taking the elements of the earth, the minerals of the soil, the rocks and everything, and creating beautiful colours out of what out of natural forms. And that that's very important to me, especially in these days where we need to really consider the planet. Uh, and all the stuff that's going on with climate change and everything. So, obviously, along with a long life's journey, I've had to uh, earn a living, like most people, and had been through quite a few hedges, some ups and downs in life's journey, as most people have. You know, I won't bore you with any of those details. However, um, when I was probably in my forty forties, um, I decided to seriously progress try to progress as a watercolor painter um and uh, really got down to it and really tried to study it now of course as everybody watching this knows watercolor paints in fact art materials they are quite expensive so and paper paints it's expensive and we're told aren't we to use the best we can we can get you know and it's true the best quality paints and paper and brushes gives you the best results but it's expensive so i would end up with trying to read lots of books on watercolor painting and everything but always ended up dissatisfied because somehow the paintings didn't look like they did in the book um, and of course they wouldn't because you're looking at a reproduction that's printed and everything it took me a long time to realize that what you see in a book or on the internet or on facebook is not what things look like in real life in real life the glow of the light from your computer or your phone is stripped away you're seeing something naked if that painting speaks to you in real life, you know it's a, it's a winner. Uh, and it can only get better if it's reproed in a book, magazine, or whatever. So, in order not to uh, carry on wasting materials, we uh, started to paint on top of my failed painting. So, and, I, and I, I kind of accidentally, stumb, accidentally stumbled because nobody was, nobody was doing this at the time. It wasn't any books. And it perhaps still isn't. Um, along, I stumbled across the technique of multi-glazing, which I call multi-glazing, multi layering. Lots of people say now, because they've seen what I do and everything, they, they say, oh, I layer and I multi-glaze and everything. But do they? And do they actually understand it? And do they really feel it? And most of them don't really feel it. Because to layer and glaze, the one virtue that you must have is patience. Because it's not a race. The most beautiful time is when you are in your painting zone, where time has no meaning. Time stands still. The world can wait. Whatever problems are going on, it doesn't matter. You're lost in the process. Some artists say you need to be quick. You need to be fast. You need to don't listen to them. You painting. So lots of lots of failed paintings, and I would start to uh, try to paint over the top of them with thin glazes of transparent pigments each one i discovered slowly modulated the color beneath and created new colors and that now after years of doing this i can get up to 24 layers of thin transparent pigment without it going muddy or disappearing of course you need to know when to stop there is a limit wow. uh, the tractor painting behind gabrielle there has got up to 24 layers of paint in it that blue color that you see is not one blue it's a culmination of lots of different pigments lots of layers to end up with that blue and there's no one of it that is the same color as the one next to it when you look at it in real life so my that that tractor 
had en been beneath in all its years, and that tractor's from about 1950, by the way, uh, vintage, and it's still working now, um, was to paint all the weather, the life, the ups, the downs, and everything that that tractor had endured, the cold, the rain, the snow, the ice, the thousands of miles of furrows that that tractor has produced, and the farmer that drives it in all weathers. And they take on the characteristics of each other, in my opinion. The DNA of the farmer is in that tractor, and the DNA of the tractor is in the farmer. To me, they're not inanimate objects. They're living creatures. They are the buffaloes of the Shropshire countryside or any countryside. So multi-layering, multi-glazing, and the motive was not to keep wasting paper and materials. And I discovered that whatever painting I'd seen, uh, they don't always work. But when they do, they're very fulfilling and very satisfying. And they contain my, my heart and soul. That's what they contain. If other people like them, fantastic. If they don't, it doesn't matter because I've had my hours, days, weeks, weeks sometimes of pure pleasure producing that painting. Now, somebody said to me a long time ago, she said, um, the most important thing he said is to do something that you love. Whatever it is in your life, whatever job you do, do something that you love, right? Well, I love painting. And he also said, if you, if you keep doing what you love, it's not work. You just keep doing it. Eventually, you might get quite good at it and eventually somebody might pay you to do it. and i love painting and i every time i start a new painting now i still get that that boyhood ex hood excitement i got when i was four painting on bits of wallpaper i still get that feeling now it's a new adventure it's i can go anywhere with it there's nobody telling me what to do off i go and get lost into that world of painting uh, and um, all the other stuff that I do, organising the International Watercolour Masters, organising my uh, art life, you know, because you have to be quite organised to do stuff, workshops, filming courses, all the other stuff. That's great, and I enjoy all that too. But my ultimate pleasure is producing paintings, and that's it. painting in heaven so Some say I'm not going so good I love I love how you're able to compact so much of your life and you're such a good storyteller and I think that probably even comes from being a, a musician right well uh, I was a musician and uh, I when I left home to be a student when I was about 18, went to be an art student in a place called Brighton, which is in the south of England by the sea. And uh, I'd never been so far in my life. It was like a real adventure to go there. Uh, I didn't know about painting, of course. And I was also playing football. So where I came from, it was a disenfranchised area, really. So um, the, the only way kids like me could escape from that existence, which was hard and rough and tough, seriously tough on the streets, uh, the only way you could escape was to either try to become a footballer or soccer player, as you call it in the States, 
or try to be a rock star or try to be a, an artist. They, they were the three things I loved to do. So I pursued every one, each one of those with a passion. Now, playing, playing football and being in a band are not really conducive because you have to play on Saturday afternoons when you should really be in the back of a van going hundreds of miles up the road or something. And of course, being in a band was more exciting than sitting on your own painting. Um, at that age, you know, uh, other things come in onto your radar screen, um, which we won't go in, into. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you need to get out and meet people. Uh, so I ended up in Brighton and, and I was still painting, but I became seriously a serious uh, athlete. You know, so I was playing and also organising everything. Nobody else could be bothered to organise anything. So it always ended up with me doing everything. So when I got to my um, mid-twenties or something like that, um, and I was completely broke, living in Brighton, completely broke. And I thought, oh, this thing, something's got to change here. I knew kind of what I was good at but and I could do, but... How could I earn some money and make a living at it? So I just decided that I would stop being a, a professional musician uh, and organize professional musicians. So <laughs> there was and I could you know didn't have to do all that traveling all the time so I managed to get a job good at it and and got reasonably successful and uh, handled a lot of big acts on tours all over the world major productions uh, and stuff I won't I won't bore it bore people with some of the names because it sounds like you're name dropping but I've worked with a lot of different people and did that for quite a few years um, the last year I did it all the time I'm still trying to paint but it's getting harder to paint when you're you know stuck on a plane or you're this the last year i did i was involved in the music industry uh what well, i went back and backwards and forwards to the usa 27 times from the uk no sooner I got back, back. I had to go back to US, USA again and then all around and I uh, at that point I was okay money wise and everything everything was great and you know royalties were coming in and everything it was fine so I'd, I'd got myself a buffer zone uh, built up where I could just indulge my own passion and my passion was to go back to where I started, which was watercolor painting. So I thought, okay, I'm not going, not going to pander to any more of these superstar egos and everything. I'm just going to, going to pander to my own ego and concentrate on reteaching myself or teaching myself watercolor painting. And that's what I did with a real passion, got into it. But half of my, my head's a painter and the other half's an organizer. So, of course, it wasn't just enough. So I had to start organizing things, organizing my own shows, exhibitions and everything and, and ended up doing a lot of traveling all over the world as I navigated upstream and got well known. Uh, ish. I was I was. Producing work that nobody else seemed to hold doors, appealing pain. So and when I'm painting those, I'm not after a surface effect. I'm actually trying to rebuild them on the paper. And I've got a lot of techniques that are unique to me where I am actually burrowing into the paper to recreate the things you see in my paintings. And it's only if you see them in real life that you would think, you know, the stuff going on here. 
I don't use any white paint. I'm a pure watercolor painter. I don't use any collage, crayons, ink, any of that stuff. I just use pure watercolor paints and water and paper and my hands. And, and, and that's it. And off I go. So uh, I ended up um, doing, doing reasonably well, reasonably well known. I've done some teaching courses as well on Domestica, uh, which have been reasonably well received. Well, very well received. And then I decided, because I've met a lot of great artists all around the world, of course, shows I've been in China and Japan and Europe, America, and um, became friends with quite a few of them. And I was actually in Shanghai with about 12 other artists. This is a few years ago. And after the show opening, it was a big museum in Shanghai, beautiful venue. Uh, and it was in celebration of the life of Zidane Shen, who's a great Chinese master and a good friend of mine. He's quite elderly now. And uh, in the hotel bar after, after the show, I was having a, having a drink and uh, my one of my friends by this time, Alvaro Castanet, was was there as well having a drink. And he asked me what my plans were for the following year. And I planned to do a solo show in the UK because I hadn't done one for a while. And I'd rent, I'd, I'd hired a venue, which was a stately home, a beautiful venue. Um, anyway, I explained it all to him, what I was going to be doing this solo show in this beautiful venue. And he said to me, David, this sounds like it could be quite good. But with me in it, it will be great. Alvaro Castanet, not very good at accents, but that's what it sounded like to me. That's pretty and I thought, close. What, seriously, you'd like, you, you'd like to be in a show with me in England? He said, yeah. be great super you know, all this stuff left that bar in that shanghai hotel all the other guys in the show come over and said well i i enjoy that too i enjoy putting things in their place and i thought if we're going, we're going to do this it's got to be a seriously elite exhibition and produced in the right way with top class framing everything good perfect venue lovely staff everything done to a, as as you would putting a big band in a big arena you know it's not made up as it goes as you go along it's all totally organized so i set about organizing that and that was the first international watercolor masters show and that was in 2018 and uh, it was on for a month and during the month there were 18,000 visitors to that show, 18,000. It was the most highly populated show in the UK for many, many years. And I knew that it was a winning formula because it was the first time someone organized an elite exhibition with the only came from all over the world to such a high, high glass and it's, it's already full it's even more beautiful when it's behind glass and it's fully dressed up fully clothed for the audience sold nearly everything in the show um it was a prototype for where we are now with I, into iwm in that there were workshops there were some demos and stuff like that going on but nothing like what we've ended up with now um but it was a big success quite obvious to me at that time that the venue was too small so no sooner had I finished that show than I decided I was going to do another one. I couldn't do it every year because it's too 
too involved and of course people are planning their itineraries a couple of years ahead the sort of people that i want to have in the show um, so it's only every two years plan the next one for 2020 then everything's organized then the dreaded covid struck so we had to postpone reorganized it for 21 2021 we finally got that show on on the road on, on in, in 2022 at a venue which is called Linishall Hall. It's huge and the grounds are absolutely fantastic. It's got capability brown inspired Italian gardens, woodland walks, all. It's a beautiful day out. The hall where the show is in is absolutely perfect for what we want to do beautiful million pound maple wooden floors uh, we bring in all the walls that the show is going to be hung on we don't put things around the around the walls around the edge because people just walk in and walk around and walk out so in my show half the hall uh, has these special exhibition walls that are bought in and, and arranged in a kind of maze so once you start wandering into this maze, it's quite hard to get out, which is quite useful. Um, then the, the other half of the hall, we have seated audience, two to three hundred seats uh, for the live demonstrations, of which there's three a day, uh, running through the whole show, ten days of the show. Um, and uh, then other bits of the hall are sort of stuff going on there's a kind of um it's got every set of the show wander around the italian gardens have a dream something to eat and then one back in. It's perfect. Your viewers will will know the names like uh, Fabio Cambrinelli from Brazil, Udes Correa, uh, Pablo Ruben from Spain, uh, Cesc Far, Patricia Guzman from Mexico. These people are first class people they buy into the concept that i'm trying to do they work with me they're good team players and they're brilliant artists brilliant artists at the top of their game each one is unique and people want to see them just like they would acdc or prince or other people that i work with they want to see them and that's that's what it's all about but in there there is space for people, other artists, that maybe are not, not household names yet, um, but they're on the festival bill because I really like what they do. I love what they do. They're painting, they've shown a level of, of, of technique, uh, consistency, and they're people I can work with, they're professional, and that's very important. Very important to work with professional people. I don't work with any that's flaky or lets me down as soon as they start to do that i wave them goodbye goodbye you know go go and go and be in somebody else's show where it's not so important because iwm now has a reputation all around the world for excellence and we need to maintain that excellence elite level today for example because i'm getting all the, the people are buying tickets to come to the show it's happening all the time and this morning, four people bought tickets from Mexico. Mexico. Tickets. They're coming from Mexico to come to see International Water Color Masters at the Shore Hall. I think 60% of the audience so far that have bought tickets are from overseas. China, Japan, lots of Australians are coming. It's incredible. So, um, you know, we must be doing something right. Uh, in addition to that, we are... So it's a, a great, it's going to be a fantastic exhibition, about 150 paintings in the show, live demonstrations, lots of nice space in between, um, quality time. But while we're capturing the uh, live 
a demo which is being broadcast onto huge TV monitors each side of the demonstration area. So the live audience who are sitting there can actually follow every brushstroke. Very important. And, and listen as well. And that the quality of the reproduction is superb. It's been we've been testing all this stuff for months. While we're while we're capturing that, I thought, well, you know, why don't we try something completely new, revolutionary, that's never been done before in watercolor painting right let's take watercolor painting to a new dimension another level another planet right let's get out of the library or the tea shop or whatever and let's show the world how great watercolor painting can be and the people in it can be so i decided to form iwm tv IWM TV captures all the content of the live demonstrations as it's happening. And this has been, I, I, technically, I'm not a very technical person. I'm okay with a brush. So I've got people working with me who really know what they're doing. And uh, so we've, they've built the IWM TV platform. While the live demos are being captured, they will be broadcast all around the world on IWM TV. It's a subscription channel, so it's pay to view. Now, this is the first time this has ever been done. People are doing live interviews and stuff like I'm doing one now. They do, do the odd demonstration. Things go wrong, th things fall over, all this sort of stuff. It's all a little bit Mickey Mouse, as we say. IWM TV built. Everything cross take it to a new there's no hidden costs, it's just one price ticket, gets you the whole show. Some people claim The great, the run by the five. Not only that, we're going to be doing for the visitors to the show. We're going to be doing a thing called Tea on the Terrace, which is the beautiful terrace behind Lillyshaw Hall itself, overlooking the Italian gardens. Beautiful table with a tablecloth, uh, silver service, lots of cream cakes, cocktails, and tea. And I'll grab three or four artists and some other people, whoever's around, sit them down for cakes and tea. And we'll stream that live as well. So viewers around the world can join in and have their, eat their own cakes and drink their own tea or cocktail, depending on the time, and join in with us while we're doing that. But the Master's Banquet, which is a full on like an Oscars uh, night uh, at the Ramada Hotel, which is in the nearby city of Telford. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, highlights from the red carpet as people are queuing up to come in. So just like the Oscars, I'll be running up and down saying, what's your name? Uh, and all this stuff. And um, where are you from? And aren't you excited? And you know, I've never seen you in a dress before. All this sort of stuff. Uh, and, uh, and we'll be doing that. And that'll be edited highlights. So there'll be lots of other content on the IWM TV platform. In addition to the live show, there will be approximately 30 hours of pre-recorded demos uh, and uh, our sponsors have produced films to go on to this as well. I myself have done a 10 episode series of called Watercolor Basics, just five minutes each program where I cut out all the jargon, all the stuff that confuses people. I just get to the nitty gritty of what it is how do you do a water? What is a watercolor wash and how do you do it? Simple stuff uh, for people that are just trying to get into it and they're a little bit confused, beginners and people that just want to refresh themselves and then maybe they've got into some bad habits and they just want to go back and see how it's done properly. So I cover lots of bases from doing a wash, explain what brushes are, paper, what kind of paper you should maybe have, how to stretch paper. 
how to mix your paint, some other techniques, little little things that you can keep revisiting, you know, practice along yourself, think, well, that's not quite right, I'll, I'll do it again. So I'm trying to cover all the bases while I've got this amazing show, and I'm very lucky to actually be able to do it. So, um, you know, it's not easy. So, um, but because of my background and my training, it's, you know, it doesn't phase me. I can put it all together as long as you've got the right people in the, in the right places and the right kind of team. Um, and at the heart of the show are over 150 masterpiece watercolour paintings beautifully presented. Lots of space between them so you can look at a painting and just look at that painting and not get distracted by some other stuff around it. Look at that. So... That's the plan, May 15 to May 24. If you're coming and you're watching this, come and say hello. Have a cup of tea or a glass of Malbec or whatever your poison is, and uh, and it'll be it'll be great. Sounds so good. And what I'll do is I'll put the link down in the description if you want to go there uh, physically. Yeah. Or if yeah. you want to hype, hop on the IWM TV, so yeah, well, you can choose. Yeah, the t sorry, Gabriel, the TV, the TV uh, link is in the same place as the IWM web. Um, but each of the artists that are in the show, um, they've all been given. Uh, they're they're all participating in this thing because you know artists professional artists they do need to earn money and and other people as well so what we've done is we've constructed uh for artists and and you gabrielle as well you're one of them because you've been a great supporter uh, your own url link um so if anyone clicks on gabrielle's url link it will take to for iwm tv you you'll go to the tv platform you could buy a ticket the, the platform will remember that you have come via Gabrielle and down the line, Gabrielle will receive a royalty for introducing you to the IWM TV platform. And Gabrielle, Gabrielle needs money. Don't you, Gabrielle? He does need, you know, it's tough. It's tough. He's got hats to buy and they got a girlfriend to look after. For sure. Yeah, um, these things cost. So uh, help Gabrielle out. Go to IWM TV via Gabrielle's link and buy a ticket. Great. And if you come to the show in real life, you can, you can not only be at the show and see everything that's going on, you can also be on IWM TV if you want to be because I can grab hold of you if you're from Mexico or San Diego or wherever you're from. And, and I can I can speak to you for 30 seconds. You can go out on IWM TV and become a world famous celebrity yourself. How good is that? It's so good. You know, so many of my friends, Pablo and uh, Judy Saltzman, you know, they're telling uh, yeah. me about going and yeah, well, I'm too. so excited for them. They're thrilled yeah. to come see you and be a part of this yeah. event. Well, we did run a, a big contest, which lots of people will know about. And the top 10 prizes were to win a place in the show. Uh, Judy Saltzman, who's in NWS, I think she's the um, exhibition coordinator or something like she's this. now the vice president. Wow. Okay, vice president. Lovely lady, beautiful lady. And NWS, of course, I'm very proud to be in NWS. I am a fully full signature member of NWS. In fact, a few years ago, they invited me to LA to judge the international show, which I was very pleased to go and do and had a great time. I think Ken, uh, Ken Goldman was the president then, so top guy and his lovely wife, Stephanie. Um, so, you know, lots of nice connections there. Judy is, Judy was one of the first prize winners in the show. Uh, one of the ten. So beautiful painting. In fact, I think her painting her painting is already reserved, even though it's not been on the wall yet for the show. That's how good a painter she is. Um, and she's coming over. Not only that, she's been kind of promoted 
because uh, I had a spot, a demo spot, which I needed to fill. Um, and, uh, and I asked her if she would consider doing this demo. And she kindly said, yes, she would, which is great. So she's coming. She's a prize winner coming to the show. She's very excited. She's coming the day before as well, 14th, one of the setup days. So she's going to get roped into helping somewhere. And she's doing a demo on the opening day of the show. How amazing is that? It's great. And we've got some other great painters. A, a, a very good painter lady in America is, her name is Kelly Eddington. Yes. Kelly Eddington, Eddington well, I've never had the pleasure of meeting yet, uh, but she, uh, fantastic paintings, and she was a prizer as well, and her painting, all the paintings obviously are in, uh, are prepared now for the show. If you see her paintings in real life, they are fantastic. Uh, David Stickle, another great American painter. He was a prize winner as well, and we've got, we've got his painting in the show. So there's a good, there's a good um, uh, coverage of uh, top U.S. painters in the in the IWM show. Uh, Laurie Goldstein Warren, who's a good friend of mine, she's been a great supporter. She's in the show anyway. Um, lovely paint, lovely paintings, and quite unique style that she does with this pouring stuff don't quite understand it myself but um, it, it ends up looking great uh, so she's in the show she came to the last one and did a demo and a workshop actually she can't actually physically come this time but she sent a, a demo for the IWM TV um, and of course we've got from Mexico the great Patricia Guzman what an amazing painter and person Patricia Guzman is like just special very very special and her uh, delivery of her demonstration and her workshop her workshop she's coming to do a three-day workshop which is just about wow. sold uh, at the show uh, but she came last time and her demonstration the audience was absolutely spellbound by her persona the aura that comes off her she's a very spiritual person it's beautiful and uh it just swept over the audience like in a great big wash over the audience and they were just sitting there in awe at what she produced so obviously she's coming back again doing a workshop another workshop nearly sold out live demo and really look, really looking forward to seeing her um so many great people who, who are who are great people in addition to being great artists so we're, we're going to have a great time and if you come to the live show you will be amongst them there are no airs and graces you will be amongst them they'll be wandering around there's more than 50 masters going to be there throughout the show wandering around and uh, you can see them talk to them be in a workshop watch a demo and even buy a painting Watercolor you have a painting. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Will you have a painting in the show? Uh, yes. So uh, I will. I'll have a few, a few paintings. So I'll have my own little section where I've got some of my paintings in the show. Yeah. Because what started all this was I'm a, I'm a watercolor painter. So uh, it's only because I'm a watercolor painter that I know all these other other people and uh, and. And can do, and can put this thing on. So sometimes people forget that I am actually a painter as well. And after all this is over, that will be my sanctuary, my therapy, my rest time. Will be going back into my studio and painting. And uh, yeah, it's a great thing to do. So good. We had a few viewers on here, and if you have any questions for David, uh, please put it in the chat. Yeah. And uh, so uh, what are you currently working on? Are you currently working on a painting? Well, at the moment, we're four weeks away, four or five weeks away from opening day at the show. So it's the last minute preparations. Everything's in its place. But a few little things like stuff's arriving. Like here's, here's a laminate master pass. So these arrived today. So all the artists in the show get one of these fancy uh, just like we had in the music industry, you know, if you were doing a show, you'd have one of these. So nice. some of my old music business connections produce these. And um, 
you know, nice. It's like, you know, something you can keep forever, wear with pride. And of course, all the other passes for the show as well. So there's all those little details coming together now. What I'm working on. So now I'm trying to work on my demo for the show because I'm doing a demo as well on the 19th of May. So I need to, because uh, my paintings can take weeks to do in real life, weeks to do. So how do I do a painting that, that looks a little bit like something I could do in one hour? It's not easy. And the only way you can do it is to, you know, I couldn't possibly do that. I could maybe do the steering wheel. <laughs> But uh, I mean, that took six weeks to paint that. It's, it's quite a big painting, 1.2 meters wide, wide four, three, wow. point, I think, three, three to four feet wide in real life and whatever. It's actually in a uh, Ch Chinese museum now. They bought it, bought that painting. Oh, wow. Very good. So um, I, may, I must do another one. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm now trying to uh, work out what subject I can produce in one hour at the IWM show live in front of the in front of the arena audience which is sitting there in front of me but also of course it's for the TV audience as well so it's quite a bit of pressure there to uh, produce something that looks like me and he's up to the standard that it needs to be so this need this need you can't leave these things to chance you just like you know a play or a, a band uh, going on everything has to be rehearsed rehearsed and you need to perfect it um and allow enough brain space for things to go a little bit wrong of course because it's not you know who knows if the paint if who knows if the watercolor paints which i treat like wild animals are going to turn up that day and behave themselves you know are they are, because they're all like little people aren't they each type of paint has its own character some of them are lovely lovely you get on well with them they always do what you want and other tubes of paint they are evil you know so uh, I, I treat watercolor it's a little bit like a cat so if you have a cat which some of your viewers will have cats if you stroke a cat the right way it will purr, won't it? It'll be very nice. It'll pretend it's your friend. Right? <laughs> but if, if you stroke it the wrong way, you're entering a world of pain. And that is watercolour painting in a nutshell. You never know. It's, it, it is still unpredictable. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it. it. It's the unpredictability that gives you that sort of walking a tightrope edge of excitement. You know, you could fall over any second. The more you do it, the more kind of uh, little little tricks and techniques you've got to get yourself out of trouble. Uh, but who knows? So I need to I need to sort that out uh, in the next few days and get that get that done, uh, and then concentrate on uh, other things. So now, good. I'd like to leave your viewers with one thing. Yes, please. Now, lots of lots of artists that you get you go and workshops and see demos and a lot of them make a big thing about how quick you have to paint how fast how this that, and the other please don't listen to that okay watercolor painting is not a race it's a search for yourself and it's true write that down and have it next to you when you're painting don't rush take your time enjoy it it's just a piece of paper if it goes wrong start again it doesn't matter just enjoy your watercolor time it's precious very precious enjoy it no one can take it away from you it's something you can just get lost in that process and imbue your soul with a wonderful experience which is watercolor painting wow that's a great pro nugget uh thank you so much david and uh again if you're just now joining us or if you're watching this on the replay which if you're just now coming on i'm seeing people hop into the chat and also hop on live you're just now showing up on what we're doing talking about i will be posting this you can watch it 
you can also go down to the links and go check out IWM's website. And uh, if somebody wanted to reach you uh, and they want to buy one of your paintings, David, how would they get a hold of you? Well, <laughs> I'm pretty easy to find. Um, I have my own website and uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, I'm, on, on, I'm everywhere. So uh, you can reach out to me via the IWM. Um, there's a way you can email um, the team um, and um, you know, you'll hook up, hook up with me somehow uh, and uh, or go on my Facebook page and send me a message. Messenger, that's another way, a good way, messenger. Send me a message, message on messenger. Say, hello, I like to buy you a drink. <laughs> yeah. So my last question, since it's evening there and it's uh, different times everywhere else, what's for dinner? Right. Well, I also like to cook. Okay. I, I am almost a perfect man. I'm just joking, just joking. So <laughs> I do like to cook. So I've made uh, for, it's actually what I call a three-day dinner. So uh, it takes the pressure off. So I made uh, what's known as a Belgian, Belgium country, beef casserole, which is made with Belgian beer. It doesn't work with any other kind of beer. Really good uh, beef, um, onions, garlic, carrots, all the other stuff in it. Uh, slow cooked for a few hours. And it is, and I have that with some green beans and other stuff. And I've also made an, what we call an apple crumble. I don't know what you, you have that in America, but it's, it's a bit different because it's apple and sultanas in the fruit part of the crumble. The crumble mix is the normal mix of flour and uh, butter, but it's also got almond flakes in it and oats. So I'm thinking, well, you know, there may be some bad, bad bits in it, but there's some good stuff as well. So that kind of balances it out. So uh, that's uh, that's going to be my dinner. That was my dinner last night as well. So tonight and tomorrow, and um, and then we're on to something else. So I love to cook, like to do it, and I and where I am, I grow lots of vegetables as well, which it's just starting planting time today. So just starting, spent the whole day. Uh, organizing the vegetable garden so we grow lots of vegetables and uh you know it's great growing your own vegetables is a great thing to do because no one's spraying them with any, any chemicals you 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 know what you what you're going to eat it might not look like something out of a packet that you get in the supermarket but uh it's healthier try it I don't know. When you said uh, beef and almonds, uh, you had me there. You had me at beef and almonds. And uh, what will you drink with that dinner? What, well, goes, what goes well with that? Well, my my favorite, I my favorite wine is is Malbec. Um, however, um, at the moment I'm in a kind of training phase for the show, so I'm not drinking any alcohol. Okay. Um, and just water or green tea or homemade smoothies. So, so I'll carry on that all the way, all the way to the show now and through the show, so I can be like fighting fit to, uh, you know, deal with everything that's coming my way. Um, although I do like, I might have a glass of Malbec at the Masters Banquet. Why not? Yeah, and a dance as well. So we got dance music and dancing and all sorts of stuff going on. It's been great. It's great. People love to dance. They love to yeah. shake it, shake it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love to dance, but when people look at me, they might not recognize that it's a dance. <laughs> people say, is that guy in pain? <laughs> Should we call an ambulance? Call 911. <laughs> oh yeah. that's so good oh, no. somebody else i must give a shout out to somebody yes. that introduced me to the nws many years ago my great friend penny hill oh i love penny penny hill if you're watching this i love you penny hill and you start you started my 
American adventure. So for that, I'm uh, forever grateful many years ago. And she was a fantastic servant for the NWS as well. And uh, single-handedly put a lot of the exhibitions together. Brilliant. So Penny Hill. Hi, Penny. <laughs> and hello to all my other friends as well. Don't get jealous. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time, uh, letting us know about IWM. And uh, if you folks want to have just outstanding paintings like this right here on your walls, you know where to find him. And uh, thank you so much, David. Uh, I appreciate you stepping up to the plate and creating IWM so people can see really how watercolor should be viewed on a wall presented in a professional way. I love that you bring these amazing artists that deserve to be shown together. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to see, you know, how uh, IWM TV and all your other events just keep evolving bigger and bigger. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much as well for inviting me. And uh, you all have a nice day now. <laughs> all right. Take care. See bye bye. Ya.